Hi there. I'm here with Carrie. Yes. Today we're with Aurora, uh, Monte Grappa, and Estherbrook. All right. So can you please tell me more about the pens? You have the famous Game of Thrones pens. We do, from Monte Grappa. All the families are there. that are currently out, which is... You have, the Lannister, you have Lannister, you have Stark, Baratheon. So um, so you started Fountain Pen Day, I heard? Yeah, about... This will be the seventh year this year. Next weekend, it, it will be celebrated the first Friday in November. So tell us a little bit more about this brand or uh, this dealership. Or it's okay. We, uh, Kenro Industries, uh, we are the distributor for Monte Grappa and Aurora. Uh, they've been doing it for about 25 years. And going from importing from Italy, we purchased the Estherbrook brand, which is a, an American brand. And uh, since 1858, it closed down in the 70s. And we are re you know, rebranding it and bringing it back to life. So it's called the Estherbrook SD. This is the first edition that was introduced from the line as it's kind of reborn is, is the tagline that we use. And it comes with a Jovo nib. Jovo is a German company that manufactures nibs. And so it's available now in extra fine, fine, and medium. So you can try this one. This one's a fine. And what Estherbrook was known for was all of the different nib sizes that they had. They actually produced somewhere around 300 different, 300 different styles in, their, in the time that they had the brand, which was founded in um, 1853. And so what we did was we created a nib adapter, which is essentially another grip section. So you buy the adapter, and then you can fit the pens with all of the old nibs. So some of the nibs that you see here on the table, they're from like the early 1950s, 1960s. So though all of those old nibs will now fit inside the pen. I mean, you can actually go for a hunt for Estabrook nibs. So if you go online, you can go to eBay and you can see all the different styles that are available. So once you have the adapter, you can find extra flexible finds. You can find fine flexes, uh, broad finds, broad stubs, sorry. And these are actually the old boxes that they had back in the time. So when we, when we launched this brand, we wanted to make sure that we had the nibs, so we started to buy them back so we could offer them with the pens. So this box is, you know, from the 1940s, 1950s. That's crazy. And they're still good because the quality of steel that they were using was very high quality. Like even in their advertisements, they would show you their steel under a microscope and then the competitor's steel under a microscope. And theirs was just much more substantial. So, so they, makes, they bragged about it. Yeah, so it makes sense why you can still find them on the market to this day and they're still quite functional. Yeah, they're still performing, right. I think he's having a good time with it. <laughs> he's, he's a pen nerd. <laughs> That's good. We like pen nerds. Hi there. So I'm here with Rowino of Paper Plus Cloth. Can you tell us a little bit about the shop in general and the kinds of workshops that you do? Yes, I would love to. The shop is an extension of our online shop, which we've been operating for almost four years now. I used to travel to Japan quite a bit for work. Uh, totally different industry, fashion industry. And uh, every trip I would come back loaded with stationery. And I was like, you really cannot get this in Toronto. So sort of a light bulb bulb moment, but I didn't really think twice about it until I got laid off. You know, those types of situations get you sort of like your mind thinking a little bit more creatively. And so um, we started selling a few things online on Etsy. And it wasn't until I started sharing how I use these products on Instagram where we really started to grow our audience. And it sort of just grew from there. And we ended up opening our first brick and mortar November last year. Oh my God, congratulations. And that is such an amazing journey that you have, which I'm sure many people can relate to. Yeah, so you sell a lot of um, washi t uh, stationery as yeah. well as pens. So um, what, what are we featuring today? Today, we decided um, from a lot of feedback from our friends and customers that we were going to bring in some washi tape because it'll be really um, distinct from what everyone else is bringing here and complimentary to the uh, fountain pen community. And it seems to be a hit. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Anything if you put the Star Wars logo on it? Are you looking for? Um, I'm considering, oh, but... This is the pilot, the pilot metropolitan that we were oh, talking about. Yeah. And, like, the metal one. All right, so we might have found a winner. I am going to go, I think, for one of these. What's this called again? This is a Pilot Metro Metro Metropolitan. Metropolitan. And this one is in a fine, and it comes in all these beautiful colors. And I can't decide between the red or the orange. Now, Fabian, let's take a look. I'm sold on this one. Fabian is sold on this one. It's so. beautiful. It's, uh... Is it heavy enough? 
it's not that heavy, but because for the price, I'm not that too concerned with the heaviness because I've noticed that the heavier they get, the more expensive they get. Mm -hmm. but, All right. So this one is just enough weight for me, and I like how beautiful it is. And um, it's very classy. It's my first, my first patent pen. Okay, so we're gonna make complete our purchases, and we'll probably test them at home with the special edition inks that we got from this show. Hi, Mary. So, what's this table about? So, my understanding is every year, um, Scriptus works with a Polish ink maker, uh, Quizzy, to create a custom ink for the show, and they're usually Canadian themed. Um, so, I think this year they actually recreated two of the inks that were really popular in previous years. One is based on like a maple red color, and the other one is like a northern twilight ink. Um, that actually, it, 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 what we call um, is sheening, so it, it looks slightly different colors depending on the light, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Which booth is this? This is the pilot booth. And we are going to try some of their pens. And they have all these inks. Yes. Mary, you were saying these are the pilot inks? Yeah, this is the pilot Ido Shizuku series. And it's really well known. And they have these beautiful uh, colors inspired by seasons and different um, weather elements in Japan, flowers, things like that. All right, so let's give it a shot. What color is this? What? 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 This is a retractable fountain oh, pen! Point, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay, wait, what do I say? Uh, uh, subscribe. <laughs> because there's the word scribe and oh! Ho, ho. oh, ho, ho. Rim shot. Ah. Really, really <laughs> terrible rim shot. <laughs> All right, so I bought the Pilot Metropolitan and we are at the Pilot booth and it says that if I buy any Pilot product at the show, I will get this lovely tote bag with a Halloween surprise treat inside. Let's see what the surprise treat is. Candy! <laughs> Happy Halloween! Thank you so much, Pilot! Woo! This is not sponsored! <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm here with Scott of 15 Pens. Hi, how are you today? Good. Very good. Show's been really good for us. That's amazing. So please tell us more about your products. So uh, the Canadian market's actually really uh, limited in terms of supplies. Most of us have to bring in supplies from the Americans uh, when we restore pens. Uh, so what I've started doing is I've started bringing in the product myself so that I can sell it to the other restoration uh, guys here in Canada. Oh, I see. And currently, I'm the only one doing it at the, at the moment. So tell me some of the things that are used for restoration for so, a noob. Yeah, so for somebody who's starting out new with a, a typical lever filler, so like this style of pen that actually has a lever that compresses the sac. Yeah. What you need is you need a latex sac like these guys. Yeah. You need shellac, which will actually glue the sac onto the uh, section of the pen. You need talc <laughs> to make sure that the, the lever doesn't bind on the sac. And that's really all you need for a, a starter pen for a lever fill. Got it. So um, I will link to your website for my viewers who are interested in purchasing restoration tools. Thank you so much for your time. Hi everyone, so we're in front of the Wonder Pens booth. So Mary, tell us more about Wonder Pens. Uh, so Wonder Pens is probably one of the most well-known fountain pen shops or stationary fountain pen shops in Toronto. They have, they've been around for a long time and it was started by John and Liz who are really well-known in the community because Liz especially writes a lot and she's on Instagram and their whole family is on Instagram. So, you know, it's a very close-knit community. Um, and they have one location in, I will think, Little Italy and they just opened a studio shop in Cabbage Town. And they've got so much interesting, like found very really nicely curated pens and inks. So there's usually a huge lineup for the booth. Hi there. So I'm here with Chris. Chris, hi. How are you doing today? Good. You were saying that these are Lamy fountain pens. These are Lamy's. Lamy's. I've made new bodies for. These are other pens that I've made myself. And what was your process for making the new bodies for them? Just a home workshop, and I just play around with different things. So what are some of the materials used to make them? Mostly acrylics. Oh, so plastics? Yes, yes. Excellent, thank you. Rubber. This is ebonite. Sometimes I use ebonite as well, but mostly acrylics. Thank you so much. So we are waiting now for to hear about the raffle winners. Good luck to us. Hi there, so I'm here with Cher Edwards Journals. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Are they all handmade? Yes, all handmade by me. Oh my god, and what was your inspiration for them? 
Well, I used to buy handmade journals, but it became too expensive a hobby, so I started to make my own. That's wonderful, and I really love all the colors. And it looks like you have a theme, a recurring theme. What's the symbolism behind the, of the themes that are on the covers? A goddess symbol holding an orb. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm yes. Yen from Yenderings. Um, these last few minutes of the show. Um, yeah, so we've got the London A5 journal wraps. They're actually two layers. So first layer, you get notebooks and such, and then you flip it up and you get all your pens. Uh, and they, these are all handmade as well? They're all handmade. Um, I designed and handmade them myself. And then you've got all the uh, smaller ones that are Toronto rolls, and they hold around six pens. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Thank you so much. There you go. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you so much. Your handwriting is like a paper mirror of your personality at any given time. Your writing will change two or three times a day depending on your mood, but usually it stays pretty, uh, pretty static. So I thought that I would do a writing sample as well as a painting sample. Mm -hmm.